I just want to see if I had that in me after a long weekend in New Orleans. Wow. Oh, your boy is cooked. Detoxing for the rest of 2023. Good morning, everybody out there. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Um, everybody getting off their graveyard shifts. If you had to work graveyard last night, good morning to you. Good morning, to everybody out there getting ready for work. If you got an extra day off, good for you. Uh, good morning to everybody on YouTube and Twitch. Powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Good morning to the Xfinity Mobile text line. All our great callers, 888-957-9570. Um, <laughs> you had to switch headphones. Uh, Chris M. Hey, I, I had to check my voice, man. I'm, boy's tired, man. I ate all that food. I'm not a big drinker. We drank a lot this weekend. A lot. There was one chask. I was mixing Hennessy with tequila and vodka. I don't know what the hell I was doing. Until 5 in the morning. Watching college football. You know what? what? Why don't we do this, Shasky? As you look at me with that stone cold look. We could ask Flip one Giants question. <laughs> and we literally, we literally could talk college football with him. He was calling Coastal Carolina UCLA at the Rose Bowl Saturday night. Heard him in a sports book in New Orleans. It's like, look at Flip. He's getting some time off for the Giants. Rose Bowl, Padres, Giants. I don't know. Dave Fleming joins us now. Joins us every single week. Flem, good morning. Hopefully you had a great Labor Day weekend. That was you on the UCLA call, right? I mean, I may have been a little hungover, but I was like, that voice sounds familiar. You were already hungover at night? You're not, it wasn't even the morning? Yeah, it wasn't even the morning. It was, bro- it was brutal. It was a long weekend. My best friend got married out there uh, in oh. New Orleans, so we're at the Sportsbook Saturday. I was like, is that Coastal Carolina UCLA? Is that Dave Fleming? I don't know. You know, it turned into a pretty decent game. I was there at the Rose Bowl. It was kind of bittersweet. I mean, the Rose Bowl, to me, is sort of the center of all the college football controversy and angst and uh, nervousness about the sport. And uh, so it was a weird place to open the season. But I was there, and it was it, it turned into a fun game. I like that quarterback at UCLA. It's not bad. Yeah, well, what's not to like? His <laughs> you know, first drive, he gets a Moves them right down the field. Beautiful pass, touchdown. Second drive, first pass, sixty-two yards, touchdown. <laughs> Couldn't throw it better. <laughs> okay, I guess this guy's pretty good. They play San Diego State this weekend. You got a lot. Of, hey, before we get into the Giants, your thoughts on prime time in Colorado? Because at the casino that morning, uh, a lot of us were there. A lot of my buddies were there, and we're you know we may have bet or may not have bet, but we we're all going crazy over prime time in the Colorado Buffaloes. What are your thoughts on that? What do you think about them going into that game against TCU? And what are your thoughts after that game? Amazing. Uh, you know, because I think, you know, when you when you hype up, when you're like, I mean, Dion has always been, you know, a guy who's brash and, and willing to talk. and But he's always backed it up as a player. But it's different as a coach. It's not you. I mean, Dion's one of the most talented, truly, truly one of the most gifted athletes of all time. And... So it was easy for him to talk and back it up. And as a coach, you just don't have as much to do with it. And so as brash as he was, I mean, it's amazing that his team played that well. TCU, I don't care whether TCU is good, not good, whatever. Uh, just an incredible performance. They look like, I mean, I'm not going to say one of the best teams in the country because they're probably not quite that, but right. uh, just remarkable transformation by him. I, He's a heck of a coach. A heck of a coach. Yep. All right, let's get into these Giants. Um, <laughs> no, because I, honestly, I was so frustrated over this weekend. Like, the, the, the lack of hitting is, it's alarming. Like, it's, it really is alarming. And we, we talk so much about starting pitching this year. To me, it's, it's the veterans. Like, I'm looking at these five guys in the outfield, okay? Slater, Jock, Hanniger, Conforto. Uh, and who's the other one that I'm that I'm misremembering? But, uh, but you're looking at guys that combined they have 300 hits. Mitch Hanniger's the other guy. 300 hits, 300 hits total for five guys in the outfield. I mean, Acuna has 185 hits by himself. Now that's the MVP of the league, so it's probably an unfair exercise. But outside of Estrada and and a little bit of JD Davis for the first half, and and a little bit of Lamont Wade, it has been excruciating to watch this team try to execute offensively. And I I just throw my hands up. Yesterday, two hits. One of them was Casey Schmidt, who's been in a deep abyss. 
I, I, I feel bad for Logan Webb. I guess that's where I'm going. This guy is reliving the Matt Cain existence these last two years, and I don't know how he hasn't broken a water cooler. <clears throat> yeah, well, maybe he has, and we haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> I, I, and it's not just him. But he, he's the one who really is getting victimized because he's got the lowest run support of any pitcher in baseball. So he's been the one who's been picked on over and over again. But I think uh, at this point, it's hard to single one guy out because they're just not scoring, period. You know, they, so now what? Four games, they've scored four runs total and had, uh, let me see, 42 strikeouts. Four runs, 42 strikeouts last four games. Uh, they're not hitting, they're not hitting for power, and they're not putting the ball in play. Like, that is a lethal <laughs> combination and i i don't know how you explain it i i really don't i mean i, I uh, the injuries for a while were the explanation but they're not anymore the conforto's they, they miss conforto and he's one of their better hitters but they have plenty of established veteran guys with track records who are still in the lineup and healthy and they're not hitting at all and it's like a total system failure on the offensive side and it's just inexplicable to me i i, I don't I don't get it. I don't know what buttons Gabe Kapler can push. I don't know how you you can flip the lineup order, but nobody's hitting. So who cares? Like you know, one guy basically for the last two months has been reasonably hot, and uh, I understand your frustration. We're all frustrated. The team is really frustrated, and I think the pitchers are getting more and more frustrated. Mm. And I I, I do I do not blame them. No, I, I don't either. And I, you know, you're asking like what, what a solution is. Like, I, I understand that you know, Mike Ostramski and, and even Austin Slater to a degree, like there's some equity that these guys have built up. I'm just, I'm over it. I'm over the platooning. Like I, I referenced five guys in the outfield. Jock has played way too much defensive left field for my liking. And I'm watching Ramos and Matos and they're in triple A and I get it. They haven't really. They haven't blown you away at the big league level. But I'm at the point of waving the white flag, and I just want to see what the young guys have. Like, I, I know that there's a merit, and I understand wanting to compete for this, this second wild card spot. You're the ninth best team in the National League. Like, I want to see the young guys. I want to see these guys play. And simultaneously, I don't think it's that precipitous of a drop-off playing some of these young guys, but I don't think they're ready to bite the bullet on the old guys. And I just, I'm very frustrated for these for these guys, and I, I just I, I don't know what Ramos hitting a home run in AAA has to do with his confidence because he needs to do it at the big league level, and I don't think he's going to get an opportunity with three weeks to go. Yeah, I uh, I mean I I hear you. I think there's some validity to what you're saying. I my guess would have been even a couple days ago, like as long as they are not mathematically eliminated, you're going to see them lean on the the veterans. I and I and that was that's my guess, but I. I think we could get to a point where that could change. I do. Uh, you know, so I, I it, it might be that you won't have to wait too long to get what you're asking for. But, uh, gosh, the, the you know, the, the, the default is always like, hey, we're paying these guys. These are our guys we're counting on. We're in it. We owe it to them. We owe it to the group to just keep pushing and hopefully something changes. But, uh, we could get to a point where that that might not be the case anymore. I don't know. I mean, I wish I had more concrete. No, I hear you. Uh, you know, Ramos has gotten some. You know, that's the thing about the young guys too. Is like the young guys have gotten a lot of chances this year, a lot. And this level is hard. This sport is hard. It's hard to be a good big leaguer, and we're seeing that across the board. I mean, as look at Ellie De La Cruz. Ellie De La Cruz is the most physically gifted player, one of the most physically gifted mm -hmm. players I've ever seen. And even he now is struggling to get the bat on the ball. He's striking out a ton. It's just been hard for him to adjust. To, so, like, it's a good reminder that this is hard for everybody. Everybody uh, has a hard time at this level at first. And so that, I try to remind myself that all the time. Uh, but the young guys have gotten a good opportunity. Like, all, almost all these guys have gotten a lot of at-bats, and they haven't done enough to – force the issue i mean the only guy is patrick bailey who sort of just established himself as i'm going to be a big part of this team going forward and you know part of it is on the young guys to whether it's whether it's hits and home runs or whether it's defense or hustle or energy or whatever do something to prove that you need to be in there more often and that, i think that's you know across the board 
you, you heard Yastrzemski really mm-hmm. frustrated after the game yesterday. And I think part of the solution is I don't care what, you know, what the bottom line results are. Do something different than what you've been doing. So force the issue in some way. Be more aggressive at the plate. Whatever it is, try something else. And you know it doesn't get easier for the Giants here in September, Fleming. Their second half has been has been dismal to say the least. But looking at Kyle Harrison, I want to get your take on this. While you're at the yeah. Rose Bowl Saturday night calling UCLA and Coastal Carolina, Kyle Harrison was on the bump and he gave up four home runs in six in six runs. And look, he's a young pitcher and I don't want to crush the guy. But I was I think I was impressed with his emotion after the game, but a lot of guys at the clubhouse was consoling him. Now, I didn't know he had that type of emotion. You know, pitchers are usually even kill, and, you know, you give up, you have a rough day, but he was despondent. He was like, it was like guys had to pick him up. What did you take from that Saturday night uh, as you met up with the team and you heard about it, or I'm sure you saw the clips of it? What did you take it out of Kyle Harrison beating yeah, himself, be, beating I mean, himself I, up I like that? Two, two things I would say, Bonte, is, is number one, it's a reminder of how young the guy is. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he just turned 22, and. His pro career, he came right out of high school, didn't go to college. His pro career was pandemic year and then slow ramp up where, you know, I mean, just as hardly pitched as a pro. Uh, So he's just so young and he's almost never had failure. And so I think it's a great reminder of how young and inexperienced this guy is. Number two, I love it. I love the fact that he cares so much. He really, really deeply wants to be a great, big league pitcher Mm -hmm. and that is going to serve him well it might not serve him well i mean i think if you flash back there was a start i remember tim lincecum so he had his debut which was you know incredibly anticipated and it was kind of a mixed bag right remember the game against the phillies on sunday night baseball and then i don't know if it was the next start or the one after that we were in milwaukee and he didn't throw strikes and then maybe Bill Hall. Remember Bill Hall for the Brewers? Oh yeah, might have hit a grand, might have hit a grand slam yeah. against him. And I think he was a he was about to burst into tears in the dugout. And it was you know Tim had almost never failed at anything athletically. And it was like oh my god, this is hard. This is am I not? You know all those thoughts rush through your head. Like am I not good enough? Is this like too, too much for me? Whatever. And, of course, it turned out not to be. And that's going to be the case with Kyle. He is supremely gifted. He's going to be a huge part of this franchise going forward. But it will there will be ups and downs because it is really, really hard. I loved it. I think he's passionate and wants to be great, and that's going to serve him really well. You know, Flem, organizationally, I'm just looking like top to bottom on this team. And I thought they were going to hit home runs this year. That hasn't come to fruition. I know Flores got to twenty this 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 week, which was, I guess, to some level of success. Um, they haven't had a thirty home run guy since Barry Bonds. I mean, they're they're one of the last teams when it comes to home runs over the last 15, 20 years. They've been wildly successful before this recent regime when it comes to finding enough pitching to offset the lack of hitting. But I'm just looking at organization. Like, what is the philosophy organizationally when it comes to hitting? Because outside of strikeouts. They've only got Estrada in the top 50 on all of baseball for batting average and stolen bases. And it's just like, it seems there's no specific organizational philosophy. Like, Kyle Schwarber is a great example of someone. I know he's going to hit bombs. He's going to strike out a lot. He's going to have a high OBP. He's not a great defender. But, like, I know what he brings to the table. Like, I, I, I see what they're seeing in there. We don't have any of those guys. It just feels like we have a bunch of light hitting, light OBP you know, no doubles, no speed. Like, what is the philosophy hitting organizationally? Yeah, well, I, first of all, I do disagree with you. I think they have a very strong philosophy, and I think they've articulated it. They've talked about it a lot, and the philosophy is control the strike zone on both sides. Control the strike zone as a hitter, control the strike zone as a pitcher. And so they have a philosophy, and they're totally failing at executing it, and that's to me, that's the issue because I have no problem with that philosophy. Like that's our guiding principle is we're going to have guys who don't chase, who swing at pitches they can do damage on. That's the power part of it because if you control the strike zone in theory, okay, you wait for the pitch where you can hit it hard somewhere. And they haven't done either. You know, they haven't gotten on base enough. They haven't controlled the strike zone. They've swung and missed a ton. And then they haven't tapped into the power when they do get a pitch to hit. So 
to me, it's more about the execution of the philosophy than the philosophy itself. Um, there's no defending the results. There isn't like there. It, and if, if at the end of this year, there aren't massive questions about why that is. And frankly, changes to what they're doing, then you will be perfectly within your right to ask some tough questions and be unhappy about it. Cause you can't have a year like this offensively and not rethink what you're doing. Because it's it just nothing has worked. And, I mean, look, I think to go along with the strike zone stuff, the power that you're talking about, that's supposed to be what this team hangs its hat on, power up and down the lineup, and they just haven't done it. That's well said, Flem. That is well said. And let's see how this September shakes out for the Giants. Let's see what it looks like after they come uh, back home. They play Colorado, Cleveland, and then Colorado again. They could get right but then the last – you know, 10, 11 games, you're playing Arizona, the Dodgers, the Padres, and the Dodgers again. So we'll see how this ends. Where are you at this weekend when it comes to college football? I'm I'm in the Bay Area. Auburn is coming. That's right. Berkeley, That's right. Uh, which is so such random. a strange thing. Uh, I guess we should get used to that in college football now. Yep. <laughs> um, although although the Auburn coach the other day said, I don't know why we're going out there. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's a good attitude for uh, bringing right. your team on the road. Uh but I think it's the fourth time Auburn will ever have played in the state of California. You know, they've been really? playing football for a hundred years. They they uh, played once. I know Florida State in the Rose Bowl for the national championship when Jameis won. It, I think twenty thirteen. That's crazy. That may be the only time though. That's the last time they were in California. Right. Yeah, they played USC in like the thirties, and they played uh, like I mean like Caltech in nineteen twenty. <laughs> Something That's like uh, it's a long, long time ago. So one time, basically, in the modern era, I think they've been in California. So anyway, I get to do some more baseball and drive over to Old Memorial Stadium cool. on Saturday night and yeah. do that game. Uh, should be fun. Hey, Cal's coming and, off a big win yeah. over North Texas. Yeah. Mean Green, he dropped the 50 burger on them. Cal showed a lot. North Texas is, you know, they're not a great team, but they're competitive. They team. are. That was a very impressive First game for Cal. Very impressive. Cal's got a running back. You know, Cal's got an incredible tradition and history of running backs. To me, it's like the bedrock of their football history. And they've got a guy who's going to be in that group when it, when it's all said and done. If he stays in Berkeley for another year, Jay Knott is, is that good. He's he good. is a special player and worthy of folks' attention in the Bay Area. He's awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. Dave Fleming, we'll talk to you. We'll be listening on a call for Cal Auburn. That'll be a fun game out there. Cal Berkeley, a great, great week of college football. And we'll see what the Giants can do. Can they get some hits? Can they stop striking out? Thanks for out? putting up with me, Dave. Yeah, Sorry. He's, he's, yeah my guy. He's, 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 he's all one. I care. I care. I want to see the team. You don't have to apologize. You should be feeling that way. That's what all of us are feeling. That's what the Giants front office is feeling. That's what the Giants manager is feeling. Like that. that there is. This is an edgy group right now, and it should be. Nobody should be happy with the way things are going, and they're not. And they're, you know, again, it's hard to come up with a concrete solution right now, but you should not apologize for being frustrated. I appreciate that, buddy. You have a good one. We'll be listening to you. I'm going to go let some more trucks honk at me. (laughs) (laughs) Good, Good grief. Uh, fun. We're trying that. to talk to the guys. Can't uh, be worse than Toronto. Can't be worse than Toronto when you almost got hit. Yeah, well, that's a fact. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm having bad luck. I can't. I can't go inside because the cell phone doesn't seem to work in these big tall buildings. So I step <laughs> outside and then I almost get run over, or weed whacked, or these freaking leaf blowers that are the bane of my existence. <laughs> uh, all right, Flip, take care of it. I'm fine, though. I'm, I'm feeling good. No, you should be yeah. feeling good. You're just watching UCLA, man. You got to dip out. Lead the Giants for a second. Watch some college football. <laughs> Talk to you guys next week. All right, Flynn. Dave Fleming here on the morning. We're also on 95-7 right. game. And look.